Hey fans, viewers, and listeners, welcome to another exciting episode of Fight Insight Podcast. You guys are in for a sweet treat today because this is our Valentine's Day episode. Our guests for today are UFC cut woman Swayze Valentine, followed by our favorite Max Payne Griffin. So what are we waiting for? Sit back, relax, and enjoy. And Tim, hit it! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fight Insight Podcast. Yeah. All right, Rain. Well, happy Valentine's Day and happy third anniversary of the podcast. This is our fourth year. We're starting our first episode of our fourth year. It's a very exciting episode. So we had to bring in one of the best guests we've ever had on the show. We had her two years ago. She skipped last year. I don't know. We can yell at her about that later. I had always intended that we would have her on for every Valentine's Day episode for as long as this stupid show would go on. Rain, bring her in. Please welcome the queen of cuts, Swayze Valentine. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Have you ever been introduced like that before, Swayze? Never. That is a first, and I'm so honored. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Swayze, I'm glad to have you back. This is our Valentine's Day episode, so of course we need to have Swayze Valentine on the show. I love it. Swayze, haven't seen you in two years. The last time I spoke to you, I said you better get into Creed 3. You did not get into Creed 3. <laughs> what the fuck happened with that, Swayze? Where were you? I mean, I talked to them, and they are just like, no, no. I just... I don't know. I really, that would have been so cool. But you know what? Uh, it's hard to get a hold of anybody in that Creed business. It's hard. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you got to get into something because I would like to see you Creed 4. Creed 4, I'm calling it now. I want to see Swayze Valentine in the corner of Adonis. Let's do it. I'm down. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Swayze, um, how's everything going with you? You are still the only female cut woman in the UFC, correct? Absolutely. That is correct. Yeah. Are you, are you, is there any other female cut women? Have, have the women flocked to you in droves to say, Swayze, how do I do this job? Or is, are you starting a cult? What's going on? So no cult yet, but um, <laughs> yes, many, many have been flocking uh, men and okay. women. So that's exciting. I love how we're just opening this door to this whole, you know, new world here. Um, a lot of women have been doing, um, cut stuff and I just I love it I think it's so amazing seeing women follow their dreams and be right there next to the guys and do it you know just as good or even better I love it very very cool there you go now Sweezy the last time I had you on the show you told me that the fighter gets to pick you right they can pick who they want as their cut person they can now typically that a lot of the times that would be like with boxing Muay Thai, like you kind of get in with a fighter and you're just with that camp. Um, but mm -hmm. when you're working with a whole promotion, then um, usually you're, you're ringside for the whole um, event, regardless of, you know, what fighter it is. But there is sometimes that if, let's say if I'm not booked for that event, a fighter can request me and I can go to that event. Oh, okay. But they can request you to wrap their hands. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ah, okay, okay. Because people don't always know that. Now, obviously, this is Valentine's Day episode. And obviously, you're around the fighters in a different vein, right? Because you're kind of there, you see them all around. Who is the most loving couple in the UFC, Swayze? We're not saying that all of them aren't loving, but like, who has the, you know, a very beautiful relationship? You know, that's a hard one because you don't really see, I mean, yes, you see the spouses, but you, you don't really see them. Um, mm. So it's kind of okay. like, which one would be best couple? I mean, I love like Tisha Torres and Raquel Pennington. Like they're freaking adorable. They just had like one of the cutest babies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And amazing people. So, I mean, if I had to choose one right out the gate, it would probably be them. Oh, very nice. Raquel, the champ. She is the uh, first ever female fighter I had on this podcast, Swayze, was oh Raquel. So I'm not saying it's because of me that she won the title, but <laughs> it could be. I mean, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, okay, Swayze, how about when the wives 
are in the corner or the or no let's go the other way sometimes a lot of times the boyfriend is in the corner of the female athlete can you tell their boyfriend girlfriend or are they very like coach athlete in that moment i say very coach athlete it'd be hard to tell um each side with the camp of if there's a relationship going on but after i mean it's kind of clear of like oh okay it makes sense now <laughs> yeah oh okay okay so i think i asked you this last time is there anyone that you can tell is in love but they haven't anybody that you want to out right now i mean let me think about i mean gosh there's so many of them in love um <laughs> no like everybody. no secret love i'm saying like you can tell there's a connection but they're not dating Ooh, secret yeah. secret secret I say the secret loves i've seen <laughs> really yeah i think there's more secret loves than like outed loves but oh between cool. what okay I see between bet <laughs> between <laughs> between people in the same like corners or you mean like just random fighter to fighter ah uh, fighter to fighter mm. yeah oh okay do you want to spoil any now do you want to give the gossip <laughs> the juice what do you got no. oh <laughs> nothing they just need to pour their juice when they're ready okay i don't know what that means but it sounds dirty as heck so <laughs> they they need to like you know say it first before anything all right all right fine um rain last time i asked swayze and she said it did happen before but swayze are the fighters hitting on you still i'd have to say that's still a thing Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can't say I'm mad at it. Um, I'm a single woman, but you know, there's kind of like that fighter thing. I just, you can't date the fighters. So that's mm -hmm. kind of off limits, but you know, there's some good looking people in there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you put them in a friend zone right away or just like <laughs> tell them right away? Nuh -uh. Nope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got to put that friend zone in. Um, there was this one time though, that I was in the ring. I don't know if we talked about it last time, but I was in the ring cleaning up the fighter before he, uh, they were interviewing him because he won and he grabbed the mic and asked me out right on the mic, like in front of the whole thing. And I didn't know, it. I, was, <laughs> so I didn't know how to answer. And I think I just walked away and it was just, it was oh. so awkward. We, how anyway. long, wait, this is not in UFC. No, no. Oh, can you imagine if that happened today, Swayze, that would go viral. You would never live that down. <laughs> I would never let that down. I would, I, I would just have to come out with a really good comeback or something because I wouldn't say. I mean, what could you say? Okay, so let's plan this now. So the guy's there. He wins, grabs the oh, mic, and instead of saying anything, he says, "Swayze, will you go out with me? Will you be my Valentine?" Oh. <laughs> Holy, Rain's got the pickup lines ready. As long as you're single. <laughs> yeah okay well geez louise i hope his wife's not watching at home swayze but no okay you got to plan like a good retort you know i do i need some help with that though because obviously i don't hmm. I... yeah I need help. I don't... okay we'll we'll figure that out um you can always say you already have plans you know and then they'll come up with another day and then yeah i don't know i'm busy I want to be yeah. their valentine i'll just be like absolutely yeah okay i feel like we need to come up with something funny so that you could say back to the guy you know what i mean like well you're oh you know what you could say you could say i'm sorry but i was i was not impressed with your performance <laughs> you you know what that's you know what that's from yes i think that would throw some george st pierre in there and like yeah <laughs> Yeah, because because then that would like be a play on that. So you could do that. So practice your French Canadian accent, Swayze. Yes, <laughs> I can do it. I know a little bit of French. <laughs> Done. Excellent. Uh, Swayze, what other gossip you got for us? What's going on? Mm, I don't really have any. I kind of no? try to gossip mill. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't have any good gossip to throw your way, and I'm so sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> How about, okay, here's the deal. This last weekend, were you at the card last weekend? I was there the weekend before, not last weekend. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So there's a guy, do you know Charles Radke? Radke? 
Do you know that guy? Okay, how do you know him? Uh, I mean, the industry's small. So oh, okay. It's very, very small. So just through other people. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, Rain, can you imagine if I found the guy that was hitting on her now? That would be incredible, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> but that guy went through a bunch of drama on this past weekend because the media really turned on this dude. Like, he said something in the post show, which Rain and I are going to talk about it later, and the media has just attacked this guy for what I feel is, like, no reason. The stuff he did four months ago, that's something different. I'm talking about this weekend. He said something like, oh, you got to, you got to, they said, who do you want to fight? And he goes, you know what? You got to pay me. You guys get these interviews for free. I need money. The media has switched that and said, he's saying that he wants money for the interview. I don't think that... That's what that means. But Swayze, I'm just asking you, if you know this guy, and his nickname is the best ever, Rain, it's Chuck Buffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Swayze, Swayze, Chuck Buffalo, is he a nice guy? He is a nice guy. I haven't really personally interacted with him too much, but just seeing, okay. you know, how he interacts, like super nice guy. Um, yeah. The majority yeah. of all the fighters are super nice, you know, but they have a persona that they have to, you know, live up to. And they're going to choose what kind of persona they want. And I feel maybe he's kind of fallen into his, his own little persona. So who knows? Maybe he's looking for the drama. Maybe he's not. I know. So guess what, Swayze? People were talking trash to him, like online. And so I've been out there defending good old Chuck Buffalo because I'm like, I watched the interview. I don't think that's what he meant. I was so mad at the media because it's like, if you think he's sitting there in the UFC table saying, you got to pay me for this interview. If I'm the media, I would have said, sorry, you want money for this interview? Like, why wouldn't you ask him and then go like, how much money do you want? You know what I mean? Uh, so, I, so I reach out to good old Chuck Buffalo. He's coming on the podcast next week. And I don't think I'm paying him. He's going to do it for free? God, God help me if it's not, Swayze. I got no money. What do you want me to <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, okay, good. So you know Chuck Buffalo. You think he's a good dude? As far as you know, he's not a jerk. Oh, no. Yeah. All right. All right. Good, good. Has anyone, has anyone been a jerk to you, Swayze? Has anybody said, I don't want Swayze because you're a female cut woman. I don't want you. Anybody giving you a hard time? You've been doing this forever. Why would they? Absolutely. Um, you know, some people still just have their preference. And uh, mm. it's just kind of, it's just, it is how it is. Uh, a lot of the times, actually, if I am like denied it's more like religious cultural cultural reasons. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So that's obvious. But no, I've had just some people. It used to be um, when I was kind of coming up, even though I was in the UFC for like five years, for example, still not a lot of people trusted me yet. And so I would like walk. I first I would walk into like a locker room and be like, hey, you know, find my fighter and tell him, you know, are you ready yet? And they'll say no. And then I'll walk out of the room. They'll say like, come back in like 15 minutes. So then I'll come back and they'll be like, oh, we already have somebody else. So then I learned, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to give them an option to not use me. So instead mm -hmm. of coming in early, I'm going to come in when they have no choice. And like, it is time right now. So then they don't have time to sit there and tell me no, or, you know, that type of thing. I used to tell them if they said they wanted someone else of like, Hey, you know, just give me a chance. If you don't like it, I'll cut it off and I'll get someone else. Or mm. your coach can do it. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, okay. And uh, I, I mean, I guess weird question, but do they pay you or is it just the UFC covers this whole spiel? Yeah, we don't get any uh, like side deals or anything. It's just straight up. No. We're just hired for the event and just get paid paid for the event. Right, right. Okay, yeah. So then, yeah. And I mean, you've been there for so long. You've been doing your thing. You're tenured. Like if if you didn't know how to do your job, you would not be there. So yeah, and maybe... I like to remind fighters too. Like, hey, you know, we're all the best in the world. Like, we all know what we're doing mm -hmm. here. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do you prefer to wrap guys' hands or women's hands? Is it a difference at all? I would say men's hands, just because typically they're they're bigger. So I just have. I feel it's easier when you're doing a woman's hand, which I have no problem with. It's just their hands are more petite. And mm -hmm. sometimes like hard to get the knuckle pad, like 
usually I'll have to just, if I'm doing a woman, um, I'll make a knuckle pad on their hand and that takes a little extra time, but that way, so I can really customize it to that individual where with men, you know, I can kind of pre-make like my knuckle pads for them. Um, because even though of course, yes, mans have different, different size hands, but typically it's easier for me to wrap like men's hands. That's kind of more of my preference, but I have no problem wrapping women's hands. Huh. Have women said, I only want Swayze though, because maybe they're more comfortable with like a woman doing their hands? Yeah, I've had, I would say the majority of my requests are woman based. Oh, oh um, nice. Yeah. They, it's just kind of nice to have like another woman there, but I have had men, men tell me like, Hey, you know, I love it when you're in the cage because it just brings a sense, you know, of like, um, like motherness. I can't even think of the word right now. It's left my mind, but um, like maternal, like maternal, yeah, like like that type of thing. Like bring some comfort, you know, in in the ring. Like when I'm there, cage side, because it's yeah, it's kind of like a you know, I'm taking care of you. It's a woman, and they said they brought it. It's brought them comfort. So I'm like, okay, I like hey. that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Rain, what do you have for the queen of cuts? This is your first time meeting her. She's fantastic. So what do you got? Yeah. So for me, um, you mentioned earlier your experience about you know sometimes you'd walk in and they'll tell you to come back and then you come back and they already got somebody else, right? So when that kind of thing first, you know, happened to you, like, how did you feel? And then later on, how did you, I guess, kind of put your foot down and be like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I have to do my job. Yeah, you know, the first several times this happened, I was really offended. Like, I, excuse my language, I was pissed. Because I'm like, I worked really hard to get here. And I don't care if it's day one or day 1001. Like, I'm good enough to be here just like you are you know, and, but I, but being in the industry for as long as I have been, you know, since 2006, like I understand there's tradition, you know, and mm -hmm. me being a woman doing the job is breaking tradition. You know, they have a lot of, um, you know, fighters, like they have, you know, certain ways they do things. And then, and it's usually like men. And so with a woman coming in, it could, you know, you know, jockey their luck or that type of thing. Um, so, I just started putting my foot down, like I said earlier, of like, I'm not going to give someone an option, you know, to switch me out. And I always just tell them, just give me a shot. If you don't like it, we'll cut it off and your coach can do it. Mm. Mm. I would think, here's the thing. Swayze has been doing this for so long. So it's not like you were like a DEI hire or any dumb crap. You know what I mean? Like you've done this because you've earned it. If mm -hmm. I'm a fighter, I might want Swayze more than anybody because I'm like, damn, for her to have gone through all the bull crap that she's probably had to go through to be where she is today, she better be probably far better than the rest of the people or like near the top. Like, no, I'm going to take Swayze's job, right? Thank you. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You can use that yeah. for your resume if you want next time. So you can work <laughs> with what Timmy B said at the Fight and Play podcast. Like, <laughs> do that. Um, <laughs> Here's something, Swayze. There's been online people are horrible, right? Are they generally nice to you on your social media and stuff? You get good people? You're good? I I get really good people. I've had really good luck. I have rarely had a situation of anybody giving me any negative anything. Like, mm. I don't know how it's happened, but um, it's they are good. My fans, the people that support me, are so good. Um, I've had, I can only think nice. of maybe two people that have really hated me and I'm okay with that. Okay. That's not bad. Uh, just, I'm going to, I'm going to blow that streak now because I'm putting your social media at the bottom. So it is at Swayze Valentine. Go follow her, but only if you're a nice person, right? So nice. at Swayze Valentine. <laughs> uh, nice people only. Swayze, I will say People online are horrible and they've been getting worse and worse when it comes to women fighters. I don't know if you see that or if that is like generally the sense you get, but it seems like a lot of times like UFC 300, people are blasting that card because there's so many women fights. And I'm like, but those are pretty good fights. Like why, like what's the problem? And people are becoming so emboldened to just go like, well, I hate women's MMA and I hate women's athletes and blah, blah. And even some athletes have been putting it on their social medias. And I'm like, how can you guys be so stupid? 
But have you got the sense working backstage, talking to people, seeing people, is there like suddenly now this weird divide of people that are like just kind of openly saying, I don't like women's MMA? Not like at the events, like when you're backstage, obviously everyone's there for the same reason. And there's what I love about MMA is just the the culture. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what sex you are, you know, what Mm. race you are, what religion, it doesn't matter. It's still just one big family. And there's so much support and respect that it's like, I don't come across that divide at all, like at events or at training camps, things like that. Um, I, I don't really know, you know, I feel that there's a good half and half that love the female fighters. And then the half of the traditional that like, no, I just want to see the men fight. Mm. Um, but women have come such a long way and man, they can put on some really exciting fights. I mean, we have seen some badass woman fights. I mean, come on, some of the best. So yeah. I just think people just need to have more of an open mind and just some people are just stuck in their ways and just aren't, aren't open to growth, I guess. Yeah. It's very strange because if you think like you like watching the sport, the sport is the same and it's like and to think like oh you know the women don't get the finishes or whatever yeah they do like molly mccann just broke that chick's arm on the weekend <laughs> like gross you know what yeah. i mean Not so i mean bad. like yeah like you don't see that that much um so yeah people are crazy but okay that's good like you're not really necessarily seeing it i thought uh there's this one fighter and i won't say his name he was literally putting on his social media is like women's fights don't belong in the, in UFC, blah, blah. And he's a UFC fighter. And he fought at UFC 297 in Toronto. And the media didn't ask him about it. They asked him about his other tweets that were like gross and inappropriate, but they never asked him about that one. And I'm like, you chickens. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, because I want to see what this guy would say when there's like the women fighters standing right next to him for their media day, right? Yeah, but. put him on yeah put him on the spot uh swayze for people that want to become a cut person again i know you talked about this last time but just very quickly how do you do it how do you become a cut person what what would the best path be to become the next swayze valentine i mean the best path would be to practice and Mm -hmm. the best practice is go to your local mma gyms it doesn't matter if it's mma boxing muay thai just get into a gym and start networking start learning the camps getting relationships with the fighters so they can trust you because these fighters are growing and they're growing fast. So if you get in with a camp, you know, people that they trust, you can just go with them. With them. Um, yeah. And yeah, just go in every, um, every like MMA gym, you know, they have sparring sessions, go in, uh, fighters would love their hands wrapped for their sparring sessions. And they're all so willing to have you practice. And cause I mean, they get extra protection when they're sparring. Mm. So, you know, so definitely get right. into a gym, um, wrap hands for sparring sessions and really start building a relationship with the, you know, the camps and the fighters themselves. Nice. That's awesome. I was at an event in East Coast, Canada. I was telling you before I was at Fight League Atlantic 13. And uh, at the end of the event, I'm walking backstage and there's a guy there and he goes, hey, I remember you from Toronto. And I was like, oh, why are you out here? And he goes, oh, because I, I wrap hands. And so, I mean, it must be a very, and I'll give a shout out to that guy. It's Coach Malik on Instagram. He's uh, Salman Malik. So shout out to you, buddy. But um, it must be a small-ish community if this guy's flying out from Toronto to this event to do that, right? Like, it's not a skill that everybody has. Mm. Yeah, it really isn't. And some people, you know, are kind of getting into it for the wrong reasons. They're like, oh, I just want to be cage side on TV and just do cuts. But it's like... There's no promotion that's going to hire you unless you can wrap hands. That's where we need, you know, you know, the specialty is to learn how to wrap a fighter's hand. And, and so a lot of promotions are not going to hire you if you don't, if you only do one and not the other, like you have to do it all, you know? So it's, yeah, it's, it's a skill for sure. Yes. 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 Because people don't realize the per yeah, the cut woman is the cut woman or cut man is also the person that wraps hands as well. Like you have to be able to do both those things uh before i let you go a couple last questions one would be what's the grossest thing you've dealt with in the last year um you know i almost embarrassed to say this but i won't put anybody on blast but there's a lot of times believe it or not when a fighter gets like a liver kick they can poop their pants and you don't really notice that that happened until you get, you're in it and you're like, you know, like the bell has rung, you're at his cage, you know, at his corner and you bend down to start working on him and you're like, oh, that liver kick really gotcha. 
So I'd say that'd probably be probably one of the grossest things that I've come across. But nature of the beast, like it happens, believe it or not. Um, that's the worst answer you could have given me, Swayze. I want to cancel this podcast right now. Wait, but hold on. But the rules in MMA, I'm almost a million percent, is that if there is any fecal matter, that the fight is called right away. So you're saying, well, but they just don't know because... That's if there's a good commission and if the commission is in the cage. I mean, this didn't happen at any uh, like UFC event or anything, mm. but they have worked within the past year. Um, yeah, I mean, not every fight is commissioned. Um, and then sometimes the commission isn't necessarily all experienced, so they're not necessarily going to go in the cage between each rounds like they do for like other more oh. you know, places. So... And I guess even if they did, it's not like they're doing a sniff test. <laughs> they're not getting as close to the as I am. So, uh... Yeah. Oh, that is freaking gross, Swayze. So another, okay, so another thing we've learned on this podcast, always choose the black shorts. Yeah, don't choose white. Let's... <laughs> it won't be good for the pictures. It's just no. not. <laughs> oh, that's terrible, Swayze. And it's happened more than once. It's happened twice that I have personally experienced. And I'm not um, saying like really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gave something, but there was something there. Yeah. And... <laughs> okay. All right. That's disgusting. Rain, uh, any last I have a follow up? Yeah, I have a follow yeah, up yeah. for you, Swayze. Um, I guess like for me, you know, my experience so far as a female cage announcer, you know, I meet fighters. And if it's the first time that I'm meeting them. You know, they usually tell me, uh, like, there's this look of like, you know, they're like, they couldn't believe it or they're surprised. And they would tell me, oh, my God, I've never heard of a female cage announcer before. Um, so for you, you know, when you were first starting out, did you get that a lot? And now that you are an established cut woman, do you still get that? When I first started, yeah, definitely. First, a lot of people didn't even know why I was there. You know, mm -hmm. they're like who's this lady, you know, asking me if I want my hands wrapped, like, who is she? So yeah, I used to get that a lot. Um, and then yes, as I've been doing it for more and more, um, I mean, to be honest, a lot of people know who I am now in the industry. So I don't really come across that, um, anymore. <laughs> Flexing so hard, Swayze. Rain, you idiot. Everybody knows who I am. That's what that's the <laughs> translation for that. So, okay, Rain, do you mind if I ask my last question? No, go for it. Go for that, it. Uh, Swayze, go. Swayze, this is a new question. Oh, hold on. Before I ask my last question, Swayze, Rain and I, along with UFC, no, PFL fighter Katniss Neal, Caitlin Katniss Neal, we're going to try to put together a dating reality show that is going to mix <laughs> MMA and dating. Okay? <laughs> like a Love Island but like with fighting, you know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We we always forget to do this, Rain. But Swayze said she's single. Swayze, <laughs> do you want to be on the show? A thousand percent. Yes. Sign me up. We're doing oh, it. We're God doing damn. it. Damn. There we go. No, wait. But you're participating in the show. You're not being a cut woman for the show. Like you're participating. Oh, I'm I'm a contestant. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Rain. That's I it. The show's, the show's getting greenlit in like five <laughs> seconds when we tell them. Pop off right away. Let's just do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and you know, just for our casting that we have to do, what kind of guy do you want us to find for you, Swayze, on the show? Well, he's got to be nice. nice. No. Okay. Yeah, okay. no. Okay. I said these are MMA <laughs> fighters, Swayze. God damn it. They can be nice and they can fight too, you know? So they got okay. like that take factor and the I'm going to protect you factor. And okay. as long as they're they're morally good people mm -hmm. that's all anything else give me a give me a characteristic give me a nothing <laughs> a long time i don't really have a preference at this point <laughs> I, I can picture her bio you know like like swayze looking for her valentine <laughs> <laughs> this stuff writes itself swayze the last question i'm going to ask you and i really appreciate your time thank you so much for making our valentine's day show perfect you know what i mean but it's a question okay so we started asking our guests maybe less than a year ago i guess but it's a question that my mom used to ask me all the time when i was growing up almost every day she would ask me so i'm going to ask it to you swayze the queen of cuts valentine 
on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you? I say I'm pushing a nine. Hmm. All right. Would good. you like, would you like to expand upon it at all? Or like what makes you happy? Um, I'm just, I've really, you know, the new year comes, you know, new year, new you, like, I'm just not letting things get to me like they used to. Um, gosh, I mean, I'm gonna be on, I mean, I think I'll hit a 10, uh, February 17th when I'm at uh, UFC pay-per-view 298. I think that oh, you're going to be in Anaheim. I'll be an Anaheim girl. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's can you sneak, can you sneak rain in? <laughs> we might. I can fit in a suitcase and then. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> all enough. She'll fit. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, sorry, but go ahead. So you're you're gonna hit there because you're gonna be in UFC and what else? Um that's about it. Okay. <laughs> Happy right. over having a more positive outlook over life in general. And that's just what I'm focusing on. So yeah. Nice, nice, good. Well, Swayze Valentine, I'm so happy that you could come on the podcast. I'm glad that we had this chat. Next time, be prepared for more gossip. Yes, you know, I will. Just sell, pe sell people down the river. We don't care, right? <laughs> like, we won't tell them. I'm glad that you told us that good old Chucky Buffalo is a good guy. We will see next week when we have him on the podcast. But uh, aside from that, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. Happy Valentine's Happy to you. Valentine. Yeah. Yes, you too, guys. Thank you for everything. And I'll see you next Valentine's Day. Definitely. All right. Thank you, Swayze. Have a <laughs> good one. Thank you. All right, that is it for Swayze Valentine Rain. What an incredible person Swayze is, no? I know, she's super sweet, super nice. Really perfect for a Valentine's Day episode. <laughs> she is, for <laughs> sure. Um, I'm so glad because last year I was supposed to get her for the second year Valentine show, but we missed her, scheduling conflict, whatever. So I'm so glad to have her back. She's so cool. She's going to be part of our dating reality show, which is fantastic. I mean, that's... We're making small steps, Rain, but we're recruiting slowly by slowly. I'll see maybe Chucky Buffalo will be a part of it, the cast. Who knows? <laughs> um, so let's see. We may have said in the Swayze Valentine interview by accident that Max Payne was going to be next week. That is not the case. We've got Max Payne coming up. So we are very excited to interview Max Payne in just a few moments. We recorded his podcast last week. Now, friends of the podcast update, I do want to give a shout out really just to myself. Let's be honest, Rain. Fight League Atlantic 13 went down. I was so happy to be there with all of my Fight League Atlantic friends in the East Coast. So specifically Derek Clark. We've had him on the podcast a couple times. He's the owner. Him and John own Fight League Atlantic. What a great dude, Rain. Um, that whole event went off without a hitch, which I'm saying that even though the main event unfortunately got canceled at the last minute because one of the uh, gentlemen wasn't able to make it. He went to hospital even with all that. And he's okay. So I'm very okay. happy to him give, give a shout out to the ghost Christian Tremaine. I, I hope that you're okay. My friend, um, the event, you know, a few things shuffled around. We recorded the pre-show. I did the weigh-ins. It was such a fantastic event. Everybody that works for fight league Atlantic, is there because they love the promotion. They're not there for a job. They are passionate individuals from everyone, from the people that set up the cage, to the people that are working the door, to the cameramen, to the production team, everybody there. I couldn't even say all their names for fear I would leave someone out. But you know, to everybody at Fight League Atlantic, thank you so much for having me. It was an incredible event. It went off beautifully, beautifully. The fights were fantastic. Next week on the podcast, Rain, we have, like I said before, Chucky Buffalo. He's coming on. And we have one of the fighters that was at that event who won in glorious fashion. His name is Rain. Say it again. It's such a beautiful name. Hunter Savage. God dang. Hunter Savage <laughs> is on the podcast. So excited to have him. We've actually already recorded that interview as well. So that is for sure he's going to be there he will talk about kind of the event, the experience and all that. And we talked to him just a couple days out of the fight as well. So, and he looked good. I mean, mm -hmm. when I saw him, right, he's got blood coming down his face. Some of it might've been his opponents. I don't know, but he was such a good kid. So very excited to have him. So we've got Chucky Buffalo and uh, Hunter Savage. I mean, geez, Louise, I don't even need to name the episode. If I just put Chucky Buffalo and Hunter Savage, 
who's not clicking on that link? You know what I mean? That's that's the perfect name. Uh, and then in the future, we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up, Rain. But just thank you to everybody at Fight League Atlantic. It was a wonderful, wonderful event. I'm so happy. Yeah, now, congratulations to you. Well, thank you, Rain. It was very lovely. And, and thank you for all your advice and help, too. And to everybody, you know, I mean, geez, Louise, it was fantastic. Thank you to my wife for letting me do it. That's one thing, because she had to stay home with the cats. Um, now, we're going to do the next interview now with Mr. Max Payne. Rain, I will see you in just a second as we cut to that interview, which we recorded last week. And then we'll cut back to our uh, goodbyes for the rest of the show. But enjoy Mr. Max Payne. He has a fight this coming Saturday, February 10th. That's right. Here we go. Ready? Bzz. All right. This guest is making his second appearance on the show as he prepares for his fight at UFC Hermanson versus Piper on February the 10th. I'm pretty sure I said that last name wrong, Rain. But he, you last saw him here back in December of 2022. So it's crazy. I've missed this guy a lot. He is so funny. Such a good guy. He's a UFC veteran. He's been with the company since 2016. And this marks his 30th pro fight. He's looking for his 20th pro win. This is incredible. He's always money in the cage. He's money on the mic. He's money on the podcast Rain. I'm so happy you get to meet him. He speaks his mind freely, tells it like it is. He sticks up for the people. Rain, bring him in. Please welcome Max Payne Griffin. <sighs> There he is in a backyard wrestling setup. What's going on, Max? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. What's up, Timmy? What's up, Rain? Hi. Welcome to the show. Welcome <laughs> to the show, my friend. Last time we saw you, it, it's been quite some time, but uh, I'm so happy to have you back. Yeah. No, me too. When I saw How the you? Fight Inside podcast, I was like, is that the same one? It ended up being <laughs> the same one, and we're out here. We're out here. These these idiot this idiot is still around doing this. What's wrong? Yeah, he didn't get canceled. He's not been canceled? Yeah, no. He, man, he beat the cancel it. culture. The cancel culture cannot shut him down. No, me man, neither. I keep trying to. That's right. I keep trying to get canceled, Max. I leave a lot of very uh, risque comments on your post <laughs> because uh, I try to get the people going on your on your feed. You know. So I know you've pinned a few of my comments on your stuff too, because it's yeah. it's comedy gold, Max, that I'm leaving on your yeah. stuff. Yeah, we need we need what? more of that. We need more controversy. Yeah, exactly. So. Max, can I say though that since I last saw you, your social media has gone a little bit more uh, outspoken, a little bit more Max, I guess. Yeah, you could always ramp it up. Um, you know, part of it could have been because I was shadow banned a lot and and banned a lot <laughs> this last year. So okay. I go right on the edge. I go right on the edge, maybe a hair over the line, but I feel like a lot of people, they can't do that or they're not willing to do that because they're worried about what other people think. But as far as my audience goes, most of my people got weeded out during all the COVID stuff, during all that other the shenanigans. A lot of my people got weeded out, uh, literally. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's team pain, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah, strong survive. Yeah, I mean, Only strong survive. Yeah, but I mean, like you get, uh, I you've been leaving some stuff because, like, you're speaking your mind. You're you're using your platform and and speaking what you think is right. Recently, I know you were posting that thing. I was talking to Rain before the show, but you were posting that thing about the football and the government uh, banning kids football or kids tackle football. Hey, get out of here. Yeah, California is a freaking hotbed for sports. Hotbed. I mean, we have so much talent. We have one of the biggest populations. And our, our guys here are beasts here. Just if you don't want your kid to play football, don't let them play. As a parent, don't let them play. Don't say no kid in California can play. Like, what is this, China? You know? Yeah. It's, it's not a communist country here. So, um, but I, I, I will give Newsom a W, a rare W, because I, I could give him less W's than I have on one hand in this whole life. But one of them was he did say that he will not 
ban tackle football for kids. So that's oh. yeah. He came out and said, you know what? We're not going to ban tackle football. I don't know the way I agree with it, but I will not ban it for everyone. So, like I okay. said, rare win for Newsom. Can I? I am not a political guy, Max. I'm in Canada. So when you say communist country, you might as well say Canada because where I am, it's it's getting bad. Similar. Similar. Yeah. You have that dictator. Uh, yep. I forgot the guy's name, but. Um, well, if I say it. I'll be, yeah, if I say it, I'll be removed off. Of, yeah, you'll uh, be YouTube flagged. Stuff. So don't say it. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, right. they'll, they'll find you. But yes. yeah, I haven't heard a lot, lot recently about it. Um, but I'm sure it's still going on because they were heavy. They were heavy on it. Yeah. Um, a couple years ago. Everything, man. Uh, did you see Sean Strickland? He was trashing the Canadian government at the UFC 297 press conferences. Did you happen to see that? I seen I seen just some of the highlights. I didn't Dude. hear everything. I just saw Ter- terrible some of the Bud Light like, highlights. So, oh, terrible. He he laid into it. Like that's crazy too because like he's an American comes into Canada and just goes off. And like nobody can do anything, you know, because yeah, he's, he's just not talking his opinion. Are there any and checks and balances for that over there in Canada? I would, I would not know. I mean, checks and balances, like what? Like he's in, like, like your guy's in charge, but like, can anyone say something to him? Like, hey, you know, I I don't know. I mean, by the time I end this podcast, if the if the police are at my door, then I'm gonna blame <laughs> you, Max. Like, <laughs> but uh, here's something I had uh, because speaking about California and, and where you are, the California kid Uriah Faber, the general got de- yeah. got got deported out of. That's Asia. not true. Okay, you left. You Max Payne left some squiggly eyes on my post. Because of that whole Sage Northcutt thing. Are you telling me you know something? I know something, but I will not say. I talked to Uriah yesterday. But I will. I can't go on here and say a bunch of shit. But I will say that Chatri was on there talking about how, um, you know, Sage's dad called from the airplane and all this stuff and said that they can't fight. You're telling me he was on the airplane during the prelims? I don't think so. Uh, wait, 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 Max. This Max, you don't understand. As much as you love conspiracies and stuff like that, Timmy B loves a good conspiracy. On that post, I said back in December that something shady was going to happen with that. Fight I saw, I saw that. I saw you say that. I knew, dude. I knew there's some bullshit going on. That whole. I apologize. I don't want to get you in trouble. Will you get in trouble if I say that One FC is shady? No, I don't work for them. All I right. don't like One F- FC. They're shady. They're so corrupt. Um, yeah, the rules like the, how, how fighters can't say not a word about anything, they have shit pay, shit contracts. Like, one FC's trash, they have good fighters, they have good fights, they it, it, it they do, yeah. But, oh, yeah, but how dude. it's set up is is shady, and they try to do sage shady out there, man. And the whole story, Wait, how the whole story how he got a call from his dad on the airplane so you're telling me that he was on the airplane during the prelims like like 30 minutes before sage's fight sage's dad is a cornerman so what are you saying you know okay here's what doesn't sage's make sense dad to was a cornerman but he's but okay so here's the thing for people that don't understand the story Sage Northcutt, he's in Asia. I don't know where it is in Asia, Japan, let's say, whatever. Japan. Two two days before the fight, where he's fighting a legend, Aoki, in his retirement fight, blah, blah, blah. Sage is on the stage doing his warm-up with Uriah Faber. Like, he's yep. doing the... What do you Uriah call it? was the fine. Uriah's, Uriah's shit's fine. His passport visa's fine. So you're telling me that they didn't deport Uriah? No, the the media no, they is saying they deported Uriah. Uriah. They didn't. That's why they're shady, bro. I talked to Uriah yesterday. They did not deport Uriah Faber. They did not. So the right. So the issue is, is that potentially his other two cornermen couldn't 
yes. get in or whatever. Maybe. Mm. Maybe, maybe a visa issue with those two. So, Max, the question to you is and the other why coach, you... the other coach was Sage Northcutt's father. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah, but, but if he's saying that he was on the airplane during the fights, like that doesn't make sense. Right. Chatri said he got a call during the prelims on a plane. You can't even yeah. call on an airplane. Yeah, yeah. You so, can't even make a phone call on an airplane. I don't know. The technology in Asia is way different than here, Max. They've already got like a they've already got like a PS9 over there. They got, they're playing PlayStation 9 games in, in Asia. We don't know. Okay. But if you're Uriah Fate, if you're uh Sage, can't you just fight with Uriah? Faber in your corner? Yeah, Who's going to be better could. than your eye Faber? You could. No. Are you a friend? Are you a friend of Sage? Yeah. I like you are? I know Sage. Yeah. Oh, I train okay. with Sage. He's a, good, he's a good guy? Yeah. All right. Are you winking at me? I can't tell. No. No, Sage oh, okay. is a good guy. Yeah, I'm not winking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That whole, th that whole story was weird, Max, but I saw your It was shady. Eyes. I even, but I went on Chatri's post and and put don't on Did the you one FC post. Yet? I don't know, but I put something about everyone saying it's cornerman, cornerman this, cornerman that. Sage's dad, but Sage's dad was a cornerman, so it just doesn't all make sense. He he was acting like Sage's dad wasn't a cornerman. Sage's dad just made the phone call, but Sage's yeah. dad was one of the cornermen. Yeah, I don't know. It's I, just, I don't I don't like it. Well, I guarantee you, after this podcast, you're blocked. 1FC has blocked me long ago. So I don't did care Shotry. about 1FC. No, okay, but they're good though. I I care about them because they've got good fighters over there. And if they're if they're not managing their business well, then where are those fighters going to go? Right? Like you want you want there to be competition. You want there to be other organizations, right? Like 1FC is not then, a UFC competitor. I don't believe 1FC is a UFC competitor. Shatri Shatri would disagree with you, Max. I know Satri said they were the they're the number one thing in the world. Yeah, they've got seventy five kabillion viewers across like a thousand different platforms. Yep. So, but what's that mean? You I it, it means literally nothing. So, <laughs> Max, <laughs> Max, you always talk the truth, my friend. Ian Gary, what do you got? I don't like Ian Gary. Yeah. No. Jeff Neal's got a chance. Jeff Neal's got a chance. Yeah, I think he does. Um, he just God, he just yeah. has to fight, not not get in, um, let Ian Gary get in his head. But I don't think Ian Gary's getting in anybody's head after his antics, him and his wife's antics um, these last couple months, just make him just look embarrassing as a fighter. And um, skills or not, he's not respected in the game. Um, period. Let alone by normal people, but fighters he took a l a permanent yeah. l for everything he said and then he's coming out saying shit about Sean Strickland. you have no right to say shit after everything that that went on with you you know straight up i know it's crazy uh rain is a huge fan of ian gary's <laughs> no i am not <laughs> you can't that's fine but yeah. He took a big L on his on that whole month, you yeah. know. And then, yeah, he 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 was sick and he talked all this crap and he was fearful for his life. Shut up! Fearful yeah. for his life, but he was the one talking. Yeah, he's in, he's weak. He's weak. Yeah. I mean, he's embarrassing. <laughs> he's embarrassing to to all of us, you know. Yeah. People like that, yeah, nah, man. Mm. Jeff Neal, Jeff Neal has to win, Max. The entire population of Earth is cheering for Jeff Neal on this. You know what I mean? They should. Like, I mean, even the T-shirt thing, the T-shirt thing. How he was. Ian Gary sure has a lot to say about everybody else, and then once people said some truth about him or say anything about him, he wants to sue and press charges. He's probably going to sue me for saying he's a sucker on here, you know? Like, yeah. he's a sucker, man. 
yeah, we don't um we don't talk to people like that. We don't associate with people like him. You know, yeah. we just don't. And it's and it's and it's telling when did you hear those stories about how like he's not he keeps getting booted out of gyms and stuff like that or something like yeah gyms yeah I heard he wants to bring the camera crews and mm. make it all about him and yeah I don't think he's a good person no you know? it's crazy um, he's reading lines he's reading his wife's lines on his on his on his interviews and he's a clown man. <laughs> Yeah, when he's, Wait, he's a good fighter. Script? He's yeah, a good fighter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll be doing the interview like this, and then he keeps looking down like he's like reading a script. And oh. he can't read fast because he's taking so damn long to read it, you know. <laughs> and then he'll read it, and then look up, and then. Yeah. Um. Uh, um. Uh, yeah, he said this. You know. Yeah, he's he's a joke, man. He may be a good fighter. But um, you need more than that in this life. Yeah, for sure. Rain, what do you got for Max? You know, um, I love seeing your LinkedIn uh, page. And I remember, I think it was last week that you had posted something about um, a bottle of hot sauce with your picture My on hot it. Sauce. <laughs> How did you come up with that? So was that like mostly like your recipe or was it the recipe of uh, someone who um, created the hot sauce? And then they called yeah, it. Yeah, we collabed on it. Um, mm -hmm. My guy, Nick, Nick Wilson from Big Unk Rubs, he has a bunch of different spices and rubs that I've been eat eating on my stuff. He's a professional barbecuer. He's a good ass dude. Um, but I've, I've known him for a couple of years now. And he's like, dude, let's do a hot sauce. Ooh. Let's do a hot sauce. We came up with a formula and it's delicious. Um, yeah, it's it's so good. It's you can eat it on everything. It's really good on wings. It has a lot of spice, but not a lot of like hotness. Uh -huh. You know, it has a lot of flavor, but it's not like too hot to like. You don't got to go. You don't like got to do that. Your tongue. Yeah, yeah, but it's just on the edge of that. Uh, but yeah, super flavorful. It looks like I'm eating a chicken wing on it, but I'm eating an ear. It's uh, okay. rotten. <laughs> Rami Brahimai's ear, I the ear collector as well. So, um, yeah, there's a story behind that. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's good. I don't good, know, if you know about that, but are you aware about the ear? No. So the thing is, I actually asked uh, Tim earlier because on yeah, your profile cool. says UFC uh, ear collector. And what he said. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Tell her, Max. Tell her, Max. I fought this guy. He had a lot of hype. Ramiz Brahimai. He was 8 no, all first round subs. Basher made his debut, and he thought he was going to come out there and just destroy me. So I had another plan for him and beat the brakes off him and hit him with an elbow, and his ear fell off, and it was hanging by his earlobe. Oh, um, wow. They stopped the fight. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty bad. I actually got a tattoo on my arm of it. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it's on the hot sauce bottle. So yeah, so here, let me. Uh, I got it here on on my phone, but there it is. <laughs> Look oh, at that. Okay, that's what you're eating. Okay. Yeah, he's not yeah, eating. Biting an ear. Ear. It's the it's ear. Not a there you go. Yeah, yeah uh, awesome. but it was on World Star. It was on. It went viral. It was all over TikTok. My my son's friends. He was in sixth grade at the time. He's like I saw your dad. He knocked the guy's ear off. Um, <laughs> you know, it went viral though. So yeah, I got a tattoo on my arm. And can we see the tattoo? Or no, when you're wearing sleeves. Yeah, yeah. We saw it. We saw it last time. Oh, here we go. If he wrecks his jacket, now you're in trouble, Rain. <laughs> Let me find. Mm. There. Oh wow. I there it is. One. I can't. My phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can kind of see it right there. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. If you're on uh, audio only listening to this podcast, get on the video version quick. The sun is right here. Oh, right there. there. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there. Perfect. There we go. Boom. It's the ear on a samurai sword. Look oh, at that nasty cauliflower ear. 
<laughs> you see like blood coming out of it too. Yeah, yeah it we're was describing nasty. this for our uh, listeners who are just listening to this on the cool. audio. Yeah, it was on my. It was actually on my face, so I was really disgusted wow. by it. Yeah, I had my head on it, and then I pulled my face back, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And he's like, "What?" And I looked, and the ref came, and fucking, it was over. Well, oh, wow. of, course, of course he said what, because he didn't have an ear. Yeah, <laughs> he couldn't hear me. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, uh, Max, you're a good dude, man. You're a really good dude. You're such a friendly guy. I did want to say, how's your family, and how's family life going for you? It's good, man. It's great. Yeah. Uh, kids are getting big. My son lives with me full time, my older son. Mm-hmm. That's been great. Spend time with his dad in his teenage years. That's excellent. Uh, nice. My my son's gonna be three. My little one, he's a freaking crude. He's like a little maniac. Um, <laughs> wife's good. We just went to Mexico last week. Last yeah, week, I saw that. I saw Prado that. Uh huh. I felt a little too relaxed, you know, because I have a head to bust. But um, it was nice. I, nice. I actually got in the cold plunge at like one in the morning when I got back because it was just warm beaches, uh, infinity hot tubs, infinity pools, warm sand. I needed some adversity, mm-hmm. you know? So I got back, jumped in my 42 degree mod tub because I need, I need, I need resistance. You know, you can't just be easy living your whole fucking life. Yeah. Easy living, it's 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 good, but it's it's unhealthy, I feel like. I feel like you get complacent. Um, yeah, you need some challenge. Yeah. Yeah, man, for sure. And then was it, <laughs> after, was it after that vacation that you got into a fight with a uh, In-N-Out Burger employee? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was this week. That was this week. Did they uh, did they give you the no tomatoes or what happened? Well, first of all, (laughs) this guy says no tomatoes. I do my order. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He goes no tomatoes, right? I said no. What tomatoes? And they read the order back, but no tomatoes, right? I didn't say anything about tomatoes, bro. I want tomatoes. And then I get to the drive-thru, and then they're like, I was like, I don't want cheese, you know. She, she repeated the order. I did a, what, a double meat, yeah, lettuce, no no bread, double meat, whole grilled, no spread. And they're like, cheese. I was like, I don't want cheese. They're like, well, you have cheese. I didn't order cheese. Yeah. Well, you have cheese. <sighs> Took a breath. I don't want cheese. I didn't order cheese. You know what I mean? That's the extra 100 calories or whatever. I didn't want cheese. Right. And she wants to argue with me saying, I, you, sir, you ordered cheese. Now, why the fuck would I order cheese if I didn't want cheese? You know what I mean? Like, I'm on a diet. It's not like... and then, Just don't argue with me about something that I know... You know what I mean? That just makes me like. And then I get to the freaking thing and they tell me I have to pull around. Like I can't wait there while they take, they scrape the cheese off of my freaking burger. Yeah. So I'm looking at the guy. They sent some big guy to come talk to me. He's like, we need you to pull around. And I was looking bigger at him. Like, than, bigger than you? Bigger he had a than big you? head. He had a big head. Oh, okay. Big, okay. A big white bald guy. Okay. A big, I mean fat, you know? Mm bastards he's like you gotta pull around and i was always like you know i'm not pulling around but i looked at him and was like he's like okay i'll bring it it out to you i'll i'll bring it out i was like you know what all right you know so all right but what i do know is that anytime i'm mad about a burger it's time (laughs) (laughs) for real you mean you're in the Earth. mental space, you know it's fight time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime, like, little shit, with, whether it's tomato or a piece of cheese, and that pushes me over the edge, 
I'm shaking now. Um, yeah. It's fight time. Did you eat your burger with your hot sauce? No. Oh, God. <laughs> Max, you got to learn how to sell your product a little bit better. There. <laughs> Everything I don't lie. Uh, I don't lie. <laughs> no, no, you do not. Max, I'm very excited for you. I'm very excited for you for this fight. Yeah, go. One thing, one more thing, since we're hmm. talking about hot sauce. Hmm. I was doing kin stretch. Kin stretch is the thing I do with Riley. Um, my guy Riley is super good, um, but it's hella mobility. But I was doing kin stretch about two weeks ago, and I had hot sauce in my pocket, like little packets in my sweats for the morning because I eat in the car, and I forgot they were in there. And I was stretching <laughs> a group of guys at Team Alpha Male. And hot sauce fell out of my pocket. And the little packets, they look like little ketchup packets. But they hit the ground. And you're like, dude, is that hot sauce in your pocket? <laughs> and I was like, actually, it is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, since we were talking about hot sauce. Hot sauce did fall out of my pocket about two weeks ago uh, yeah. when I was in my kid's scratch routine. Anyway, I had to just mention the hot sauce thing because it was unbelievable. And if anyone that happened to anyone, it would be me. So <laughs> what I do need to do is put my hot sauce in packets. Yeah. That's, that's the new business idea. We could sell it in a little box. So you yeah. get like 30 packs, you can take it on the go. That's the next um, thing. Thank you for the Fight Insight co- podcast for – there putting me up on game and making me think about this. You know Thank what, you, Max? Right? Actually, you know what? Seriously, that's actually a genius idea, dude. Because anytime you get hot sauce in a packet, it's that same shitty brand. You don't really have like options. And anytime, like I go to like uh, what do you call it? Like those art shows or whatever, those home shows and stuff like that, where they sell like those fancy hot sauces and things like that. It's always just in giant bottles. And then every time I want to buy it, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy like another giant bottle of this hot sauce. But if you could buy it in small packs and like you know give me a box of packets, what's a home show? <laughs> That's what I want. Home, like tra- like from trade Canada, <laughs> they have those in Canada. <laughs> yeah, we're forced to go by the government. No, uh, <laughs> it's it's like it's like you know like uh, like vendors will go around and do little like shows like like trade shows and stuff like where people have like their okay. little small businesses, you know. Oh, like a, like a, like like a, a network. You didn't know event. either, right? Like a yeah. Like a farmer's like, market thing or like yeah, a, that's what yeah. I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah farmer's markets. Yeah, market. like farmer's markets, but they're like bigger ones that like kind of come around like a couple times a year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, like you get like uh like shit like this. Hold on. We're learning something about Canada in this you'll podcast. Get, like, you know, like you'll get cups like this, you know. Let's avocado. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get- they talk shit to me. I say holy gua I said holy guacamole on a on do doing a commentary show or not the com but I'm like I'm talking like you now. A uh I was doing fight commentary on a watching fights and I Ooh. said holy guacamole. So my, my jujitsu coach Elliot Kelly he always talks shit and says holy avocado you know so <laughs> well there you Send go me avocado memes avocado emojis you say avocado one time on a broadcast and they just keep rubbing it That's in it. It's done. That you're branded for life, uh, Max. We've kept you long. I do want to say thank you so much, man. You're like one of my favorite fighters, dude. Twentieth professional win coming up for you, man. That's a huge accomplishment. What a milestone for you. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. You know. Mm. Yeah. I'm here to fight. I'm here to fight. I'm ready to fight. I've been trying to fight since fucking Q4 last year. It's been a while. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm steady. Yeah. Oh, me against me. I don't even care who it is. I don't care who it is. I. Yeah. My opponent, cool. You know, yeah. he's a competitor, but I don't yeah. care. Dude, Max, I'm going to ask you one last question if you don't mind, okay? One last? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I, I wanted to say one thing. The other thing I do want to give a shout out, though, because you mentioned it before and I didn't get to it, was uh, Newsom did another good thing in the state of California. I don't know if you know but they passed the pension bill, the MMA pension bill in California. So did you know, had- I, I spoke on that at the freaking Capitol. I know. 
I know, dude, because you know I why? Was because part of that. I know, and congratulations to you because we had Matt Haney on the podcast a few weeks ago, who's the guy nice. that offered the bill. Nice. And yeah, Matt Haney's the homie. He's cool, man. That guy's an yeah. awesome dude. Yeah, because he was talking about Alpha Male and all the guys there, and yeah. you're one of them. Yeah. Um, he uh, he was talking about the pension bill and stuff and how like it got passed through in the very first year. All all good and done, dude. So all those California yep. kids that you're that you're around that are uh, playing touch football now, those guys can become fighters and get a pension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, and I'm I'm vested too, so I'm already in. They dude, they asked me on like one night's notice too. At like eight o'clock at night, like, can you talk tomorrow? I was like, tomorrow? And I was like, you know what? I've been fighting out here for seventeen years. I actually fought in these, these Indian casinos. I fought in these parking lots. I fought when it wasn't legal in California. So I was like, you know what? I will speak on this shit. And um, they tried to not let me talk in that room. They tried to not let me speak. Um, but this nice senator. Um, brought me back up. She's like, my dad used to watch wrestling or take me to wrestling shows and fights and boxing matches. And Max, can you please come up here and tell us about your experience? Because other guys were like, oh, yeah, eh, sit down. I was like, sit down. Okay. You know? <laughs> There's such ass kissers in there. There's such ass kissers in there, bro. There's such... You I don't know if you've been to a freaking one of these senator like hearing things. Oh my god, your honor, your honor. Oh, how's your kids? How's your wife? How's your mom? Oh, yeah, how's you? Oh my god, bro. It's 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 such a horse and pony show. I don't know how they get anything done. I mean, yeah, well, fucking get to the bill, you know? Yeah. Fuck. But dude, but that, but that's why, but that's why. Congratulations to you and to everybody involved in helping that happen because it's a huge. <laughs> thing, dude. I wore it's shorts huge... too. Oh, okay, okay, nice. I well, it's a good thing. Too. It's a good thing, Max. I got one last question to ask you. Um, I, it's something that I've been asking all my guests for the last little while, but when you came on last time, I didn't have a chance to ask it to you. But I want to ask you now. You, I know you're in fight camp, so maybe the answer is a little bit different, but. It's a question that my mom used to ask me almost every day growing up in my life. So I'm going to ask it to you, Max Payne Griffin, the ear collector, on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you? I'm a 20. Whoa! All right. Yeah, life is good. Life is good. Family's good. good. Business is good. I'm talking to you guys. I'm always in the moment. I'm not in the future or the past. So the, the moment is a gift, baby. You know, you got to be in the present, and the present's always good. Yeah. Um, yeah, sun's shining. I just trained. I'm out talking to you guys. I'm out to get a massage in 15 minutes. Like, life is good, man. I'm very happy for you, Max. I seriously, dude, of all the people that I've met, this is episode 158 or whatever this is. We're in our fourth year now. Max, you're one of the coolest dudes, man. You're one of the guys that, like, I always hope for success and and just in life in general. But then when I see you on your social media and I see you doing well with family and all that stuff, I know that you're living the good life, man. So I'm I'm very proud of you and happy for you. Well, have me on fucking more, man. I don't know Yo, why it took about, fucking two years. Do we want to talk mean? about the? Do we want to talk about the fact that Rain was saying all this nasty stuff about you for being 15 minutes late? <laughs> yeah, we do. Say it. Say Rain? it. Don't spray it. Rain. <laughs> Hey. Oh my God! Hey. Well, we're this, waiting this, for you, this, and I was like, "Oh my God, guy. maybe he forgot." I didn't yeah. forget, but like I said, um, yeah. I looked at the clock and it was twelve. No. And then I'm in. I'm training with my coach, Marinoble, and we're hitting the pads and all this shit. And then I look, and it's like twelve forty. I'm like, "Is that the real time?" <laughs> and I checked my phone, and it was twelve forty three. I was like, oh, "But man. I know you confirmed with me yesterday, so I was like, no, I don't think he forgot. It's probably you I know, didn't forget. We talked about this yesterday, and yeah. I don't never forget. Yeah, no, I, never, no. I don't forget." Rain said, "This son of a bitch! I will kill him! I'm gonna come over there and get him!" She was she was headed over to your gym now to attack you. <laughs> Where do you live, Rain? I live in Ontario, California, not I was Ontario, say, you're Canada, Canada too. No, oh, no. God, no, no. Look how happy she is. Ontario, oh, California. <laughs> What'd you I'm say? You had to say something bad. You had to say something. When people are late to me, I'm like, what's up? You know? 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might have recorded some of it. I'll send it to you later, man. Okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, Max, we're out of here. Max, thank you so much, dude. You are the absolute best. Good luck. Go kick some ass. I get will. a bonus, dude. I want to see you get it. I will. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get a bonus, and I'm going to Super Bowl. Oh so, yeah. Nice. After I get my bonus, so I need my oh, bonus yeah, to go to the Super Bowl weekend, right? It's in Vegas, yeah. yeah. So when I get the bonus, I'm going to Super Bowl. Nice. Max, bring some wings. And bring your hot sauce when you go to Super yeah. Bowl. I will hot bring sauce. my hot sauce. Hot sauce. They have for wings everything. there. There you go. <laughs> And make and make those packets. And when you make those packets, I want a free box. Okay. Nice. <laughs> the you put them in the background box. on your shelf. Yeah. The there. Oh yeah. Hey, dude, and I do. Before I let you go, I want to say I love what you're doing with the uh, card unboxings. Like when you do your uh, sports cards unboxing. What you got there? What you got there? Oh, what, got, the I, what you got? What I, you got I, there I, right I got, there? I, I got some UFC ones, some PFL ones. These are just some. Oh, hold on. I'm not even showing the good sides. Whatever. You know. There we go. PFL cards, you make those? Dude, PF how dare you disrespect PFL? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I saw it, I saw it at the store. It's like a box. I didn't know they made PFL cards. No it's way. Upper deck. It's upper deck. Yeah. Yeah, upper deck. That's what's up. Oh, I didn't know they had PFL so, cards. So they did, I don't know what they did, but they did like it, you get the whole set in one box, uh, 30 cards. It was this was the 2022 season. The so whole I say set. The it's whole not set. like it's Panini great. or Fanatics. No. How like you get no. gold and so no. But when you do buy it, uh, there are some chaser cards in there. So thankfully, though, I did get like a special one of Sadabusi, who we've had on this podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta send good. this to him. I gotta send this to him to sign. But um, I like what that. you do with the card stuff, man. That's fun shit. I like watching that. Yeah. It makes me feel like a kid again, you know? Yeah. yeah but I yeah, feel like exactly. a kid anyway. That's why I look so young. You know what I mean? That's how we are here. Mm -hmm. All right, Max. We're out of here. Rain, you want to say goodbye to the man? Bye, Max. Thank you again. Good luck on Bye. your upcoming fight. Thank Great you. to meet you. Great to meet you. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, I'll see Max. See you all soon. Yeah. See you later. Man. We'll see you soon. Yeah. See you. Bye. Later. He's so funny. <laughs> this dude is hilarious. I'm telling you. I can't with the in and out story. <laughs> All right. Rain, we had recorded that last week. What did you think your first time meeting Mr. Max Payne? Oh, my God. He was so much fun. I could not stop laughing throughout the entire interview. <laughs> so I, I cannot wait to speak with him again. He is insane, that dude. Funny as heck. Rain, I feel like we ran that interview much differently than we have other ones because we really just let him talk. Like mm -hmm. we let him just kind of go with his own cadence and just do his thing. Dude is hilarious. Max Payne is the greatest. And I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. And go get his hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. Can we go get some hot sauce from that guy? Jeez Louise. Do it. Um, I do want to, speaking of hot sauce and not to take away anything from Max Payne, but there was a gentleman that at Fightly Atlantic, he runs a hot sauce company. They okay. actually they actually support Ben Lease. And so it's all kind of, you know, it all cyclical in nature. But he gave me some hot sauce. So I do want to shout out Rain. I do want to say thank you to Spicy Boys. And I got some hot sauce. These are very cute. Cute graphic, yeah. Yeah, very, very cute graphic. I got a few bottles from them. You can check them out. Go to Spicy Boys on Instagram, but here's a couple more. They're all, oh my goodness. Wait, terrible. so what flavors are those? Because So these, like okay, colors. so this one is Kiwi Jalapeno, Orange, Ginger, and Habanero. And the one that I have opened so far, which is freaking really, really good, was Smoked Peach Scotch Bonnet. Oh, oh my god! So that delicious. Really Rain. good. Rain. I don't know if they deliver to the states, but if they do, you should go check them out. They are Spicy Boys, so yeah. I do want to say thank you so much to Spicy Boys for this lovely uh, little treat. I love it. I've already been trying it, so thank you so much. Rain. God knows how long this podcast is because we've cut in and out of this whole thing. But thank you so much, Rain. You've been incredible. I'm glad that you met two of my old friends, Swayze Valentine and Mr. Max Payne. 
that's it. Well, I think we're out of here. Unless you want to say me. anything, what's going on, Rain? Anything no, to thank say you for having me. It's always good to meet, you know, people from the industry. Um, you know, it's always good to know their story. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who work, you know, you know, for the most part, people see the fighters, you know, and they don't see people like Swayze. Right. And, or like commentators like yourself, you know, like it, it's hard yeah. to like see, you know, what makes this whole MMA uh, thing, you know, act as like a whole body. Um, yeah. We always to see the fighters. So, but, you know, it's always a, a, my pleasure to be a part of Fight Inside podcast and happy yeah. anniversary, Tim. Happy anniversary to us and happy anniversary to all the people that have been watching and supporting this show. Rain, you talk about all the people that put the show together, of course, and a, a cage announcer is an integral part. <laughs> so don't throw that away, right? Yeah, no, I really do love that we've been able to talk to not just fighters, amateur to professional. We've been able to talk mm -hmm. to the doctors, the referees, Chris Lieben, the judges, Mike Bell, you know, the nutritionists, the fighters, the coaches, the owners like Derek Clark with Fight League Atlantic. So thank you to everybody for always being a part of this. You know, geez, Louise, we're into the fourth year. God knows how long this thing runs, Rain. But uh, Swayze said she wants to see us next Valentine's. So I guess we're going for one more year at least. Yeah. We got to right. keep our promise to Swayze. Yeah, don't want to don't want to ruin that. All right. Thank you, guys. And have a good one. See you, Rain. Thank you.